Greetings, vinyl community. Welcome to everyone, wherever you are in the world at this very moment in time. Um, before we get to the vinyl, which we will, we will be getting to very quickly today, because look how much we have to get through today, which we won't get through all of it, but there's a lot of vinyl to get through today, a lot. Um, before we get to that, I want to say a very sincere and thank uh, and, and heartfelt thank you to everyone uh, who watched my last video, which was a tour of this very music room that I'm in right now and a tour of my setup. Behind me, uh, thank you very much for watching that video. And because a lot of people seek those videos out, there's a lot of new subscribers and a lot of people who that may have been their first video they've seen of mine. So a little piece of advice for you. If you subscribe and you continue to watch my videos from here on forward, uh, grab some popcorn, grab a blanket, tuck in. Um, there's always a lot of vinyl to go through. I like to tell a few stories, try to make it entertaining, I guess. I wouldn't put that to a vote. I try, but welcome. Welcome to you. Very, I, I very much appreciate you subscribing. So cheers, everyone. All right. What we have to get through today, or to show you anyways, um, it is a combination of uh, a lot of thrift store finds, the byproduct of about two or three different huge hauls since I've seen you last. Um, like I said, uh, there's about 115 new vinyl um, finds um, since I saw you last, or my last vinyl finds video. So there's thrift store finds, there is uh, just regular normal record store finds. Uh, there's some new records uh, I've talked about in the last few videos. Um, I've had a lot of trade credit. If, you, if you're new to my channel, I took a whole big whack of CDs into a local record store, got a huge amount of trade credit, and I've been just adding uh, little missing pieces to my collection uh, very slowly. So that's what we got going on today, is, uh, is that. So what do we got coming up first here? Um, you have to excuse me, there's vinyl everywhere around me. It's not as clean as it was when I did the Music Room Tour. Stacks of vinyl everywhere. I want to talk about this this record first, and then we'll get to the thrift store finds and all that fun stuff you come here for. Um, I was very fortunate to find a copy of this album uh, that I've been looking for for a long time. It doesn't come up here very often, or doesn't come up for sale very often. Uh, but I found a reasonably good copy at a local record store called RCP. Thank you guys very much for that. It's a copy of Dennis Wilson's uh, Pacific Ocean Blue, which I want to talk about very quickly. And I'll make this my screen cap. Good enough. Uh, I want to talk about this for just a very, very brief moment because I think it's well worth talking about. Um, if you don't know this album, or if you know this album, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, this is possibly, I don't want uh, to go on record as saying it's the greatest. It's definitely one of the greatest one-off albums of all time. If Take critic lists for what they're worth, but this album is always consistently on the top critic lists of all time, top 500 best albums of all time, top 1,000 albums you have to own, blah, 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 you know those lists. But it's consistent that this album is always on those lists for many years, uh, for many years going now. And in 1977, when this was released, you can look at Dennis here. He doesn't look like much like a Beach Boy, does he, at this point? He's lived a very hardened life at this point. He's, um, his voice is very gravelly very gravelly. He's uh, very dependent on drugs and alcohol. And of all the Beach Boys that you would think would cobble together a great solo album, at this point, you would not bet on Dennis, but he did. Um, by the way, this is an original Caribou Records pressing from Canada, um, in case we're keeping score at home. But he cobbled this album together just out of nowhere, pretty much. And, um, I'm only going to use this word once in my videos because I think it's the most overused word in our time. Uh, it takes you on a journey. And unless I'm showing you journey albums again, you'll never hear me say that word in this context. Um, although it's not a linear story of his life, you can you can hear the, the pain and you can hear everything he's going through in the songs. And it's, it's, it's an, an amazing listen and I can't, um, recommend this album highly enough as uh, Dennis Wilson's uh, Pacific Ocean Blue. And uh, I'm going to say something slightly, I won't say it's controversial, but I'm going to. If you offered me a copy of Pet Sounds right now or a copy of this, I'll take this album. Pet Sounds, it's uh, slightly overrated. 
but that's a whole other video I can make on that one. But I know a lot of people love pet sounds, but all right. Anyways, I love this album so much. Um, and I said, it's a good listening copy, which I'll be listening to, but I also, uh, re re fell in love with this album so much that I, I went out and got, um, this is still kicking around Amazon. I don't know why people aren't buying this one, but it's the music on vinyl pressing. Or maybe people just don't know you can buy this new. Cause maybe, maybe your stores aren't stocking it. I don't know. But it's the music on vinyl pressing from 19... Or not... It's from 1977. From about 2013, maybe? I can't remember if this is when music on vinyl released this. But there's still copies kicking around for a reasonable price. Um, a vast superior copy to an original pressing, in my opinion. Uh, 180 grams, faithfully reproduced, um, gatefold, inners, um, very amazing album. So like, I just wanted to show this one. Uh, it's still available out there, and I highly recommend um, you listen or sample. And it's not an album you can really sample. You have to hear the whole thing. So anyways, that's my spiel on uh, Pacific Ocean Blue by Dennis Wilson. Uh, where are we going to go from here? There's piles all around me, so I'm going to try my best. Um, this is from trade credit I got at a local record store, which I've already talked about. Uh, embarrassingly enough, I have never owned this album on vinyl, but uh, Faith No More, The Real Thing. And I don't know why, because the summer this came out, uh, this was the car tape of choice for me and my friends. We played this thing out. Uh, this is the recent double um, Rhino Records um, release that came out. So I was happy to pick up a copy of that. Uh, the bonus album is really good, actually, too, with um, live songs from Brixton Academy in London and some um, B-sides, etc., etc. Really, not, oh, okay, the, I was really happy to get this. Voivod, I've talked about them before, but one of the greatest, if not the greatest, metal band to come out of Canada. Uh, this was from 2006, and this is the Red Vinyl Limited Edition of Couture's. Um, this has one Jason Newstead. He joined the band after leaving Metallica. And uh, great album. I don't think Voivod has put out a average album. They've only put out good to great stuff. This being one of them, this was kind of like their comeback album with their original vocalist, Dennis um, Belanger, I believe it is. I apologize if, if I'm wrong on that. It's Denny Belanger. Anyways. Or, uh, anyways, great album. Um, I, I think I've teased this story before, but I have a very good story about going backstage um, and meeting them and Jason when they opened for Ozzy here in my city and having a run-in with Sharon Osbourne. But I'll tell that story another time, unless I have and I, I forget about it. But Voivod, Couture's from 2006. A uh, copy of Morrissey's Born a Drag. It's not really cool to talk about Morrissey, apparently. Uh, so he's been in the news. I don't know. I don't follow it. But uh, anyways, uh, this is a compilation of his all his early singles. Um, which I'm happy to have. Um, a lot of Morrissey heaters out there right now. Oh, well. What else do I have to show you? Um, I think that might be all. I think if I come across, like I said, this this mixed, it's a mixed bag all in front of me here. If I come across anything else that's new, I'll let you know as we get to it. Cheers, everyone. All right. Let's get to some thrift store finds. John Coltrane's I Love Supreme. If you don't own this album, shame on you. It's one of the greatest albums of all time. Um, this is a 80 or 81, 1980, 81 MCA records pressing, um, which is really nice sounding actually um, for that era of MCA records. But Love, uh, Love Supreme by John Coltrane. I cannot talk a whole lot about these albums today because there's a lot to get through. <laughs> um, I, try, I tried my best to group these into um, the two or three hauls I had because it kind of gives you an overview of, I guess, the magnitude of some of these finds, how, how great it is to find these, some, some of these things at thrift stores. So I've tried to group these as best I can, like a copy of Depeche Mode's Some Great Reward. Do I need another copy? No. Do I have several copies of this? Yeah. Wasn't going to leave it behind, though. So great, Some Great Reward by Depeche Mode. And then in that same haul, I got a copy of uh, Behind the Wheel, a 12-inch single by Depeche Mode, which uh, I think this is my 10th or 11th copy. If you follow me on Instagram, and once again, shame on you if you don't, it's at N-A-Z-Z underscore N-O-M-A-D, Naz Nomad. 
Uh, not that long ago, I went through, I, I posted photos of all my Depeche Mode singles. Not all of them, but a lot of the variants and multiples I have. I think this is copy 10 or 11 I have of Behind the Wheel. Yeah, it's, it's an illness. Uh, the Cure, Why Can't I Be You Torment. I think I have this, but this is definitely an upgrade copy from their album, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, The Cure. And then that 12-inch single I didn't have is 1982's Let's Go to Bed. Very, very happy to have this one on vinyl. Okay, let's get to... I'm trying to figure which way to go. Uh, this is all part of the same haul, I think it was. <coughs> Excuse me. Once again, not to digress, but it's very early in the morning. You can see the sun rising behind me. I'm trying my best here. Anyways, Beatles Abbey Road. Uh, this is the uh, purple label Capitol Records pressing of Abbey Road. I've been finding a lot of Beatles lately. Um, which isn't unsurprising, but finding Beatles in good condition is a little bit surprising. I've been finding a lot of good condition Beatles vinyl. So Abbey Road, the, um, I believe it's later 70s, um, those purple labels came out. Don't quote me on that. Uh, Japan, double vinyl best of, I guess it's kind of a best of, I guess. Japan double vinyl at a thrift store. Oil on canvas. Um, if you're going to have one compilation by Japan, this is the one. And I found a really nice double vinyl pressing. Um, all the goodens are on here for the most part. Highly recommended listen, Japan. Uh, <coughs> over on this side of the Atlantic, meaning North America, I don't think Japan ever did get their due credit. Uh, I know in the UK and Europe they're, they're much uh, highly regarded, but uh, Japan albums, very, very, very hard to come by, but when you do find them, uh, I highly recommend them. This one I don't know much about. Um, I'll be honest with you, I have not listened to it yet because I have a lot of vinyl to plow through still. But uh, apparently on Discogs, and if you trust Discogs descriptions, uh, it's, it's a folk psych album. Uh, a band called Morgan Mason Downs. Uh, original Roulette Records pressing. If you know anything about the, this band, let me know. Uh, I'll sample it soon enough, but uh, it's worth a few bucks, so I picked it up. If I don't like it, I can always I can always turn it around. Anyways, Morrison uh, Morgan Mason down. I don't even know what year it's from. Either late sixties, I'm gonna guess. Anyways, I like I said, if you know this album better than I do, let me know. Nice copy of the Doors first album. Uh, maybe it might be an upgrade copy for me. Not sure. It's the Red Electra label copy of uh, the first Doors album. So we're still. This is still that all the same haul um, that I got uh, in one night, which I think I posted on Instagram. Once again, follow me on Instagram. You can see me posting these photos as I find these damn things. Cocteau Twins at a thrift store. Uh, as amazingly as you know, as um, as Japan, I guess. But this is a treasure. Uh, Cocteau Twins, an amazing find, part of that collection. I'm guessing whoever donated this collection is a very sad, sad depressed person but thank you for donating that record collection I, I'll give it a good home uh, Kato Twins Treasure gonna park that one because I don't think it's part of this one haul uh, Elvis Costello my aim is true um, I think this is my favorite Elvis Costello album watching the detectives Allison uh, working welcome to the working week less than zero mystery dance yeah it's pretty packed my aim is true I assume everyone who's watching these videos of mine have that has this album. If you don't, memorize it and go buy a copy right effing now. You need this in your life. My aim is true, Elvis Costello. A much, a definite, a much definite, definite much upgrade copy of Prince's 1999 from the same thrift store hall. Like I said, there's nothing more I can add about this album. Very happy to have an upgrade copy of that. And man, have I been finding a lot of Kate, uh, Kate Bush records. I was going to say Pate Cush. Um, I'm not sure if that's a real name, but I'm sure if I Googled it, that would come up as a real person probably living in, um, I'm going to say, Oklahoma. That's where um, she lives. But Kate Bush, I've been finding a lot of her albums recently. Um, multiple, multiple copies. Um, and this is my favorite Kate Bush album is The Dreaming. Uh, I found another copy of this. Is probably my third copy I found this year, of the Dreaming by Kate Bush, and then also the Hounds of Love. 
I needed an upgrade copy of this one. I'm not leaving it behind, but I needed an, another uh, copy of that one just to um, have a, yet another upgrade. The Beatles. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the compilation series that came out, Rock and Roll Music Volumes 1 and 2. I think it was like late 70s. But Rock and Roll Music Volume 2, which has uh, Drive My Car. It's all the good, if, you know, Bypass Volume 1, go for Volume 2 if you ever find these ones. Uh, Tax Man, Birthday, Get Back, Helter Skelter, Back in the USSR. Really nice. Uh, these came out at least here on the Purple um, Capitol Records uh, label. But not only did I find one copy of this record, I found two in the same hall. I don't know who donated two copies, but thank you very much. I had two copies of Rock and Roll Music Volume 2. I'll, I'll only need to keep one, but uh, good compilation by the Beatles. And God knows there's no compilations by the Beatles on the market. Nothing at all. Canadian punk band, DOA. Uh, the greatest, uh, well, not greatest, I won't say greatest. The, the most well-known punk band to ever come out of Canada. From Vancouver, B.C., Got a copy of, these are both for my collection, and, and I don't have these. This is from 1991 or 92. This is 13 Flavors of Doom. Um, I haven't heard this album in years, and I played it the other day. It's actually really good. Really happy. This came out on uh, Devil Biafra's Alternative Tentacles label. DOA, 13 Flavors of Doom. Uh, and from 1985, I believe. Did I just lose my voice there? 1985? DOA. Let's wreck the party. Uh, if you're not a kin or you're not uh, attuned to Canadian punk, this means nothing to you. But if you're Canadian and you're into this music, this is these are very, very, very important finds. So let's wreck the party by DOA. Ah, uh, where do we go from here, David? I'm trying to figure it all out. I'm just going to start sharing records because there's so many to get through. Uh, Genesis, uh, and then there were three. I'm not going to add comments to a lot of these albums just because we're going to run out of time. Long John Baldry, uh, everything, um, every, everything stops for tea. <sighs> it's going to be a troublesome morning for me. This is for my collection. I haven't had a copy of this on vinyl, um, a nice copy like this on vinyl. But Long John Baldry, everything stops for tea. This one has like, I believe, uh, what Rod Stewart's on this one. Elton John's on this one, I believe. There's a lot of people on this album, uh, and it's one of his greatest albums he ever did, Long John Baldry. Another copy, but a really nice copy. I might keep this one for myself. As my son has, has told me, he likes the song Big Iron. I don't know why. He saw me picking this up from the thrift store the other day. And he goes, I know Big Iron. He's like 16. He's 16. And he, and he knew all the lyrics to Big Iron. I didn't even want to quiz him how he knows this. But I will probably later today. When he wakes up around 6 p.m. Because he's 16 years old. And the summer's almost over. I should yell at him to get up right now. But. But he knows the song, he knew the song Big Iron by Marty Robbins. A really nice copy of uh, Gunfighter uh, Ballads and Trail Songs. Um, this is not an original pressing. This is uh, a later uh, Columbia Records pressing. Still, really nice copy. And I'm just impressed that a 16-year-old and knows Big Iron. There, there's hope for music, apparently. Uh, Billy Joel Piano Man. I've talked about this before, but this is only the second time I've ever found this album at a thrift store or, or out, out in a boat. Uh, and a boot for all the albums it sold you don't find it very often and this one is for my collection actually is a copy of Piano Man uh, the, the band Rock of Ages um, I'm not that familiar with this album to be honest with you I, I guess it's a live album but I don't see um, the original lineup on this album oh well it's a band album I don't have Rock of Ages and this is going to go all over the place, like, like like a lot of my videos for you new people out there. I'm welcoming you with welcoming hands. Welcome. These videos go everywhere, like all different directions of music. Janet Jackson's Control and this in the Shrink with the original price tag. Ten forty eight. Someone paid for this originally in the Shrink. Janet Jackson's Control. Um, let me throw this over there. Uh, I had a good uh, haul of funk and jazz stuff, which I'll get through really quickly here. Uh, Thelonious Monk at the Jazz Workshop double vinyl on, was it Columbia? Thelonious Monk, 
That's for my collection. Really, really super nice coffee. Well, I guess if it wasn't, I wouldn't be picking it up to show you, would I? I'd be leaving it at the thrift store. Um, where else are these funk things? I picked up a lot of this unknown funk stuff that was part of this haul, like this album called, uh, the band called The Strikers, uh, 1981. And I plan to listen to all these funk albums all in one big long haul um, one of these days here. Kenny Lattimore, I believe it's Kenny. I could, I'm, I, I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar with this. It might just be Lattimore for all I know, but it's sealed. Um, it goes for a couple dollars. It's called Dig a Little Deeper. It's in the shrink, sorry. It's sealed, um, so I, I can't sample it. I might crack it and sample it. I don't know Lattimore. Some of these, if you know these albums, and I, I'm telling you I haven't heard them, let me know. Leave a comment. Uh, Ohio Players, um, nice upgrade copy of Fire. And if I had time, I would un whenever I find an Ohio Players album, I like to unfold and show you the gatefold because that's half the reason why you buy these damn albums. But Ohio Players, Fire, nice uh, upgrade copy for me. Um, I, I'm sure some of this other funk stuff is buried in here, but we're going to, just to save some time, I listened to this album for the first time yesterday. It's not my cup of tea. I was hoping to like it, but I'm not, I not. I, I not like it very much, if that makes sense. If that's uh, goodly English. Uh, Burt Jantz and John Reborn. This is an original 19, is it 66, mono pressing on Transatlantic Records. And I picked it up because it's worth a few bucks, but I thought maybe I'll like it. And it's not my thing, really. Maybe I'll, it'll grow on me. But uh, a lot of people were excited to see that I had found this at a thrift store. But there you go. This is maybe the second time I've found this album. Uh, but I can't say enough how this is as much... Th this is as close to new as new gets. It is an original uh, Polydor pressings of the Pink Fairies Never Neverland. This was found at a thrift store the other day. And when you feel inside the cover at a thrift store and there's no inner sleeve, you expect it to be scratched to hell. Do you think, oh, they didn't take care of this record. There's no inner sleeve. It came out looking as new as new gets, like I said. Um, an amazing upgrade for me. So the other copy I have, I'll be uh, flipping, as it were, and keeping this copy. Amazing, amazing. If you, once again, if you don't know this album, have a sample to it. Really great album. Janis Joplin, Pearl, another copy of this one. Uh, this might be my, my copy I keep. It's a VG condition copy, which is good. It's a good playable copy, which I'll keep for, the, uh, for myself. What are we on for time here? Where do I go, everyone? I'm trying to figure out bog standard stuff or bog standard stuff. What's over here, guys? I got piles everywhere. Um, yeah, let's get to this stuff. Some more of the funk stuff I found, actually. Let's get to this. The Anglo-Saxon Brown Owl. I've never heard this band before, but I picked it up because of that cover. Uh, Anglo-Saxon Brown. Pretty cool name. Uh, a song called Songs for Everybody. Or Everyone. Songs for Evolution. I was wrong on both fronts. There are Songs for Evolution by Anglo-Saxon Brown. I've only heard this album once. I plan on playing this again. I really liked it. Um, original Canadian uh, pressing of Superfly. It has the original fold-over... That little die cut sleeve thingy there really nice copy that's for me keeping nice edition of superfly my son actually i was playing this album the other day not to mention my son again but i'm very proud of him love him to death he's my he's my son of course i of course i love him what are you talking about but i was playing this album and he uh, he actually really loved this album so much so that he and, he and he's not attuned to this kind of music he's into like that rap stuff that's out nowadays but he loved this, and I, I caught him listening to it on, on a streaming service he has. But Lonnie Liston Smith and the Cosmic Echoes, Visions of a New World. Um, I really love this album, and I got, apparently so did he. So, uh, really nice condition copy of that one. Mandrill is, this is Mandrill's second album. This is In the Shrink. I don't know if you can see that, In the Shrink. Mm, shrink. And I just realized I'm rubbing a baboon's head. There you go. Uh, this is their second album called Is. Um, the first two Mandrill albums. Amazing stuff. A lot of people see these in thrift stores or they see them at record fairs. And some people underprice them because they don't know what it is. Pick them up. 
Go with a baboon. Trust me, he's not, he's not going to lie to you. It's great stuff, Mandrill. Their first two albums. Uh, the Meters, like I said, when you're on a streak, you're on a streak. The Meters strutting. Man, this and their album, Look Kai Pai Pai. I'm probably saying that wrong. But those two albums, some of the most amazing funk ever made in the 70s. This is on Josie Records. The Meters strutting. Is that it for the funk stuff? I'm going to park this one for another video because there's some obscure jazz stuff. I don't know who know who really wants to know really obscure jazz stuff. And there's bog standard stuff like Bridge Over Troubled Water. A nice copy of that one. Um, this one's really cool. And it's just for the sake of uh, context, it's worth a lot of money on, on, on Discogs. This is from 1976, 77. This comes from the first jam album, All Mod, Con, uh, All Mod Cons. And they did a sampler album for radio in North America, and this is what this is. It's a promotional copy for airplay only, and it's edited versions, actually. The only place you can get these edited versions of Mr. Clean, and on the B-side was To Be Someone and English Rose, um, an original polydor record sleeve. Um, I've never seen this before. And I'm very happy to have this one by the Jam uh, radio station only sampler. Uh, Tears for Fears, Sowing the Seeds of Love, or Seeds of Love, sorry. I don't know, I must have 10 copies of this album. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. I don't know what more I need to say about that album, that album but nice thrift store find. Uh, Big Rec, does anyone know Big Rec out there besides Western Canada? Although they were a US band with, a, I believe, a Canadian, uh, or they were a Canadian band with an American lead singer. I don't know. But they dominate 50% of, of rock Canadian airplay to this day. I was so shocked. I'm not, I'm not a fan of theirs. But when I played this album, that me and my wife recognized at least five of the songs off this album that are, that are radio staples to this day. And maybe Western Canada is the only place these guys were popular. Big wreck. I found an autographed copy at a thrift store. I don't know if someone won it, didn't want it, but... Big wreck. Um, like I said, I, I don't know if anyone else knows them, but they're massive in Canada and especially Western Canada. I'm gonna try in this video right on the nugget at 30 at 30 minutes. I could be wrong, could be right. Uh, Keel hair metal. I like Keel. Now it's, that was their third album, I believe, to self titled called Keel. Um, Bathory. I found a copy of Bathory, and I've, I've not been arsed yet to look up what pressing this is. This is on, I don't know, Blackmark? Blackmark Records, I believe. Um, one of the early kind of black metal albums out there that came out in the, in the 80s. And if you're going to, it, it's, anyways, it's, one of, the, it's one, of the, one of the best albums of that genre ever, Bathory, first album. Um... I went out and sought this album actually from a thrift, uh, not for, from a, a used record store, and I had some credit there. So I got a copy of Elton John's Empty Sky. This was the reissue that came in a different, uh, a different cover here in North America, but it's his first album. I can't stress how good early Elton John is, but this album is an album unlike Captain Fantastic or Mad Man Across, Across the Water. It's, it's different. It's a, his first album. He's experimenting. It's a little bit psychedelic, a little bit progish. Um, it's, I mean, a, a lot of people don't give this album due credit, but Empty Sky, listen to this album, please, if you're, if you like Elton John. Uh, where do we go? Three albums by, uh, Grace Jones. Uh, Living My Life. Um, Slave to the Rhythm. Slave to the Rhythm. And if you're going to own one Grace Jones album, in my opinion, go with Island Life. It's a compilation of her singles and best songs from her Island Records years. It's it's a no-brainer. Grace Jones, look at that cover. I love me some Grace Jones. That that's a really good compilation. The Island Life. Um, this was a gold stamp promo thrift store find. This is part of that other find with uh, Cocktail Twins in Japan. Gold stamp promo copy of the Echo and the Bunnymen Ocean Rain. That's not a bad find. Uh, I'm trying to rush here. Okay, look at this album. And you're not going to recognize it, I don't think. Okay, now look in the corner here. It might look a little bit more familiar. 
This is a radio station only pro advanced promo copy of this Mortal Coils Filigree and Shadows white label and it's called an uh, advanced selections from but it's actually the full album uh, in a different cover and man is it worth a ton of dough. I found this at that thrift store haul with that and I didn't recognize it. I thought was it a massive attack album like what is this? And because I'm scooping shit up and I'm taking it home, I didn't. It wasn't until I got home until I realized that this is uh, it's actually this mortal coil, and uh, it's a it's a radio station advanced copy of Filigree and Shadow, one of the best ethereal gothic albums of all time. I'm gonna, I'll say that for sure. Like I said, whoever donated that had a really great taste in music. I'm trying to flip through these to see what else I can find. Uh, this is part of that trade credit, Suicidal Tendencies, uh, first album. On, was it red vinyl? Pink vinyl, actually. Uh, this is the one I've had that has institutionalized. I'm, I'm hoping to find a copy of Join the Army soon. And that would complete my Suicidal Tennessee's collection. But that was a nice pickup there. Uh, you know, I still have new actually, other, other new vinyl to show you. God damn. I'm not sure who's hung in this long. But I'm going to end on this one here. And I'm over the 30 minute mark. Is Pink Floyd. This is a bootleg called The Heart of the Sun. But uh, this is on that Coda label um, that's, I think, out of the UK. And they released tons of FM, the you know legendary FM broadcast albums. Uh, and I guess they're semi-legit. You, you can buy them in stores, but I guess they're um, radio station broadcasts. Um, and there's no real ownership, apparently. I don't know. But this is Pink Floyd, The Heart of the Sun. And this is made up of uh, live songs from 68, uh, all, all from 1968. Uh, nothing Sid Barrett, but it's just after Sid Barrett left um, and Roger Waters is in. Uh, these are recorded recorded in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, uh, Rome, and Paris. And you get, it's actually pretty decent. The rec I mean, for bootleg, they're actually listenable. And to have a live document of this era of Pink Floyd on vinyl, you got to, to set the controls for the Heart of the Sun, Interstellar Overdrive, Astronomy Domine. Um, and I think you get double, you get duplicate versions of set the controls and let there be more light, but who cares, it's Pink Floyd. And I got it for trade credit anyways. So really uh, investigate these. Some, some of these Coda ones are really awesome actually, and some are complete shit, but nice one on this one. Well, uh, well done, Coda. Am I going to end on that one? I should. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to end on this one. Because no one, no one stays to the end of this video. No one. And I'd like to know who stays to the end of these videos. Because if you do, please tell me what album I'm ending on here. And I'll be very surprised that you're hanging into the very end. This is a new vinyl purchase. Uh, Collective Souls new album, Blood. And I'll maybe talk about this next video. They, they've done, out of the blue, they've done one of their albums, their best albums they've ever done. You have to be predisposed to like Collective Soul. I love Collective Soul. And just, this is maybe top three, top two albums they've ever done, in my opinion. Blood. Just brand new, released in a nice foily cover. Blood. I'll talk about more about this album next video because it's so good. I think I have another, fuck, I didn't even scratch the surface here, did I? I think I have about 75, 80 more albums to talk about, which gives me an, uh, enough fodder for next video. Say thank you to everyone. I really appreciate all the support I get. Um, it means a lot to me. Um, support, I, by the way, I've, I've been watching all your videos. Um, and I may not leave comment because sometimes there's really no comment to make. Um, but I do watch, I do support your, your, your channels. Um, thumbs up. And, uh... Yeah, so support other vinyl channels. Um, there's a lot of great ones out there. There's a lot of shit ones out there, and you, you can pretty much tell the shit from the good ones pretty immediately. But the good ones, they're not always the most views. Support them, because they'll never grow, and they'll give up before they get to be really great, well-known vinyl channels. So support those ones, please. We're going we're gonna to end on that note. So take care, everyone. We'll see you next video. Peace. See you next time.